everyone. Welcome back to How Come. Hope you're having the best weekend or had the best weekend. Uh, it was July 4th weekend, Independence Day for America. So if you celebrate it, I hope it was awesome. I hope you're recovering um, and feeling good. Uh, if you didn't celebrate, that's cool too. If you're Canadian, happy Canada Day. That was July 1st. And uh, if you're our guest today, congratulations because you guys are both doing huge things. Our first guest, Maria Del Russo, is a sex, beauty, and culture writer. She also just published her first book, Simple Acts of Love, July 2nd. Congratulations, Maria. I love both of our guests today. You're going to love them so much. They're both giants in the sex space. Maria's writing has been featured in The Cut, The Washington Post, Glamour, In Style, Man Repeller, Bustle, Refinery29. Um, She's currently the voice behind Playboy's famous advisor advice column for the spring 2019 issue. And she's amazing. Um, She also just interviewed our other guest at a Playboy event that I attended two weeks ago where they were talking about something huge. Our next guest is Alexandra Fine. She is the CEO and co-founder of the sex toy company Dame. She's doing something very important and very in line with the Independence Day notion. Uh, Dame is currently suing the MTA for rejecting its advertisements. This lawsuit really shows you the discrepancy between what um, companies will allow people to advertise. And it seems like it's completely based on gender. Um, so we're going to dive into that. And I hope you had the best weekend and are having the best week. So get ready for Alexandra Fine and Maria Del Russo. These two are awesome. And of course, we've got extras with them on patreon.com slash how come. Always go there if you want to hear some extras. If you want to come see me live, please come see me live. July 10th is only a few days away. I'll be in D.C. at the Draft House. You can get your tickets online. Just search D.C. Draft House Remy Casimir. Um, or you can go on my website, remycasimir.com, and the date should be listed there, and you can link through to it. Um, it's going to be awesome. I want to see all of you, so please come out. We've sold a good amount of tickets but don't miss the chance. Who knows when I'll be back in D.C.? Trump scares me. I don't want to be there, but I'm going to be there, and I I can't wait to see you guys. So July 10th, Draft House in D.C., 7.30 p.m. My friend Sarah Armour is going to be performing too. She's amazing. Um, She also is really deep into astrology, so if you talk to us after the show, she'll like fully do your birth chart. Um, But yeah, July 10th, DC Draft House, come see me. If you want to hear extras on this episode, which you will, uh, we talked a lot before we got recording because Charlotte was out getting medicine for Nanny. Um, those are really fun extras. Go to patreon.com slash how come. We also have that amazing satisfier panel about masturbation with a bunch of sex experts. So you should check that out too. And uh, as always, rate, review, subscribe. If you like this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. A lot of you are like, oh my God, I just figured out this week. Hooray. That's amazing. I'm so glad that you're out there. Um, We love your reviews so much. And it really does help this podcast. Uh, Follow us at How Come Podcast. If you're not seeing our posts, a lot of you have written me like, oh, I've been following you for a year and I've never seen a single post. Well, we might be shadow banned. So turn on your post notifications. Um, I teach you how to do it on Instagram. So just go go do it. Follow How Come Podcast. Um, if you want to get merch, howcomepodcast.com, baby. It's up. We got sweatshirts. We got mugs. We got bath mats. We got stickers. We've got hats. We got all the stuff that you could ever want to wear. You want to wear something that says, did you finish? You got it. You want to wear something that says companion? Okay. You want to wear something that says, how come? Well, of course, we have that too. Um, So yeah, go check out merch. Charlotte, me, and our friend Pamela have been working so hard um, to bring it to you. So go to howcomepodcast.com. Patrons, I've got a special promo code for you. So you'll see that on patreon.com slash howcome. And yeah, if you want to shop any of our partners that you've listened to on this podcast, you're going to hear about some great products today. Go to howcomepodcast.com and go to the Shop Our Partners page. We've got discounts. We've got everything. Promo codes. Do it. Uh, we got stuff from Dame Products. We're going to have affiliate link with them. So um, yeah, and get ready for this episode. It's going to be awesome. So let's kick it off now with Maria Del Russo and Alexandra Fine. How come? How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just. Welcome, Maria Del Russo. Hello. Woo. Woo. And Alexandra Al Alex Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of the above. All of the above. Yeah, it's gonna be great for my SEO, my personal brand SEO. that's the only thing no, yeah the thing. uh charlotte's also here what up charlotte hello, hello charlotte. 
I'm back. Um, so this episode, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff because you're a sex writer and you own a sex company, mm-hmm. but mainly we've got some shit that's going down. Um, and Dame, Alex's company, is currently suing the MTA because... Because they have treated this whole category like poop. <laughs> um, you can say shit. It's fine. Yeah, I think poop is funnier. <laughs> and I've also treated poop in- interestingly as well. Oh, actually. Yeah. Interesting. So, so the MTA, um, I mean, this whole, I guess, I mean, the story probably started really with thinks. Yep. Um, but the MTA has historically treated women centered, not seen women centered companies for what they truly are, mm. which is often health and consumer goods and lifestyle brands. Um, sometimes they're, they're more likely to view them as inappropriate. Yeah. Um, and then Unbound, which is another amazing yep, company. Yeah, we had Polly on yeah, last she's, season. She's amazing. Somebody I grow a lot with. In life. <laughs> um, she. Went to go run ads on the subway and they rejected them and she got press around that rejection. Mm -hmm. And part of it, like the main story that like the New York Times, like the headline in the New York Times was like, sex toy company cries sexism, MTA says they'll work with them. Mm -hmm. So I reached out and was like, okay, you guys said that you would work with this industry. Like, like, you know... Want to work it. with us? Oh, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Um, uh, we send them a ton of. We were really willing to work with them too. Like mm-hmm. I think when it comes to this category, I try to be really understanding and empathetic of the ways it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think that so, so we really like we're willing to hear them out. Like gave them a bunch of different ad copy ideas and visual ideas. You know whether it had the product or not. Yeah. So we gave them all these options. They approved them. Yeah. We planned for our ad purchasing, like, and inventory purchasing and planning the business yep. life um, to run these advertisements. We made them, we sent them to them, and then they just ghosted us for, for, three, for three weeks and then, cha- then, like, wrote us a formal letter saying that they would never work with us or any sexually <gasps> oriented brands. And, like, would... I'm sure I'm making it sound. I mean, it was definitely I mean, pretty me, harsh me language. Me and Maria are both acting surprised, but we've both heard this story yeah. because Maria literally <laughs> just... I talked to you about it yes. two yes. weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know that it was intense, that they actually were like, we are not working with any they, sexual so you work, brand. So you work, like, the details. It's interesting always seeing the stories that get published. Yeah. And, like, you know, mostly people just read the headlines in the first paragraph. Yeah. And it's so much nuance. Um into really how it went down and you know like most again like mostly the headlines was like sex toy company says that the MTA is sexist sexist. sexist. but like you've never seen me call that like I don't think I've ever really no I like to be real I, what I want to do is just tell you their their actions yeah and let you decide (laughs) yeah if you think sexism might have had something to do with it totally But like in legal language it's like it seems like there's you know we did that's like a sub clause so they said that they would not work and uh-huh. never have worked and never yeah. said that they would work with a sex with a sex with yeah. any with any, any sexually sex- oriented yeah. businesses. So what they're saying is it's in that that like if the business has something so it's not about the ad content because right. like as we know there's lots of ads that use sex yep. to sell their products yeah. all the time beer like, wouldn't get like, sold without like that Calvin Klein so like, ad that's on Houston Street that's like a new celebrity in his underwear every yeah. freaking like yeah week. I mean Calvin Klein like, is doing great things for LGBT so yeah so okay but yeah. still but, but you know what I mean sex is selling sex and like, yeah, yeah and also even like I love like Buffy has this ad where it's like a uh you know like suggesting that you know Do all things in what bed, are the yeah. things that you do in Buffy. bed Buffy makes um, a eucalyptus a comforter. comforter oh okay yeah. um, so it's using sex to sell a mattress a, but you can't yeah. use and sex to sell sex, and sex they, toy and they're really doing it in a way that's not like erotic it feels fun and playful yeah um, yeah because a lot of us just eat but that would be okay bed. right yeah. not, right and I think they make that joke as well exactly um, and then they're are, so they, what they're saying is it's sexually oriented businesses yeah. or businesses that do something in sex. Yeah. But like, you know, Hims, erectile dysfunction, mm-hmm. Romans, all, all of those companies are selling ED, most, ED drugs yeah. for libido and arousal. Yeah. Um, 
predominantly or even for men. swipes. We we advertise Roman swipes on this podcast. Yeah. They're great, but isn't Zachariah the CEO of Romans is an A plus human being? Roman seems like great people. Yeah. But it's unfair yeah. that they get to be in the subways and we and don't. You know what's interesting? And Both of those companies have also commented publicly saying that they agree with us. That of they course. think it's unfair. It isn't which is it's really not the company. It, it isn't, isn't these the company. companies. It's no. the MTA. And it's deciding that female pleasure exactly. and female mm-hmm. sex particularly they even allow is the museum moved. of sex to so now the fda the one response that they have given so far to the press is something along the, the lines of like well the erectile dysfunction stuff is fda approved yeah. mm-hmm. and that like so that because it, men need to have their boners right, people right or I mean, people I with penises need to have their boners yeah. mm-hmm. Sure, it's, but it's also like, what about the Museum of Sex? Yeah, like you're running ads for. They've also run arou- yeah. arousal libido supplements. Like because not, it doesn't one, say true. anything specifically about a woman being alone and liking they sex. They sell are they products want, at yeah. the Museum of Sex for yeah. sure. Like they how? they had that a photo of that bounce house that had all the tits in it from the Museum of yeah. Sex. Do you remember they had that like yeah. two years ago? Yeah, and yeah, again, yeah. the tit bounce house. Yeah. Bounce house. <laughs> and you know what? I thought that ad dope. Also, it was awesome. did not, yeah, love did it. Did not make me feel aroused. Like I think that that's the yeah. thing we don't want. Yeah. What we don't want in advertisements is to feel horny on the subway. Because yeah. <laughs> like I think we all know where that could go. Yeah, like, we don't want there sure. are already people on the subway who feel a little too horny. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you don't need any stimuli. So. But the thing I loved about um, Dame's advertisements, like the ones that you showed in that Instagram post that I referenced in the panel, was yeah. that they weren't sexual. No. It was like no. hands clasping or just the vibrator it that really doesn't even said, look phallic yeah. like it's crazy you and polly rodriguez mm-hmm. both put up different posts of the ads that did get passed and the ones that did get rejected mm-hmm. um and like the hymns ones love hymns but it's literally like a very phallic cactus it's a cactus well, in, the shape of a co- in the shape it's a yeah. cock cactus it's a cactus <laughs> it's a cactus <laughs> i also think not intentionally our ads look really similar and i think that it's uh, i actually i have a we worked with this woman named Veronica who helped us make her ads. She uh-huh. also worked on the Thinks campaign. Yep. The, the Thinks campaign so she, took a long time to get past as yeah. well. Uh, right. They did not want mm-hmm. period uh, anyway, suggesting but, things. Women bleed? Yuck. How dare you? People bleed. People, People bleed. bleed. Yuck. Um, anyway, the, our ads and the hymns ads actually visually look they very really similar. similar. Yeah. yeah. Which like, well, you know, not, not great in general for us. Like we're always trying to, we don't want to... Mm-hmm have overlap with other brands it's like not ideal but in, for this but case, for this case it, it actually works in your favor it's like look this identical yeah. ad is getting rejected yeah. just because she has a, a yeah. woman's name yeah it's it really a shame because i feel like um from like a writer's point of view headlines like that since people do mm-hmm. just read the headline in the first paragraph, mm-hmm. all it really does is make women think that their interest in sex toys is also incorrect. Because right. since the MTA, so right. because since the MTA is like you know blah blah blah, and the the New York Times is like kind of being sarcastic with their headline. Yeah, it mm-hmm. just leads women to be like, oh, I don't know if uh, they're being sarcastic. They're yeah. actually being kind of honest. Yeah. yeah, it was funny what the MTA wasn't into. Like we had like some copy that was like more intimacy than rush hour, and they uh, were like, don't make that joke. That's not a funny joke. Yeah, <laughs> and we were like, oh, that's not funny. You like, might not think it's funny. Eight. I take, think it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> we were like, take the take the train to O Town. Like, I uh, like that. Yeah, we like made train pu- puns, and they were like, don't. Don't, don't do don't bring us into the MTA is not bring sexy. Us into, yes. Don't bring us into fucking. <laughs> How dare you? But they were totally fine originally with copy that was like toys for sex. Mm. Um I think um you know we had quotes being like my wife thanks you from the bottom of her vulva or something. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I think one I mean, of the best headlines from this was like humble vulva gets <laughs> like rejected. <laughs> oh my god. I'm I think it was, like, it was such a good it was my favorite headline. I love it. Um I think Did you know wait mm -hmm. Ashley Gavin who was on last week's episode has a joke in her stand up but it's actual fact that hurricanes with female names get taken less seriously than oh hurricanes with male names. Can we just like reset this That's simulation so please? Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like society are more likely to get like 
like killed in a hurricane because they'll just be like Katrina. Nah. Oh my god. That's so That's funny. That's insane. Well, it's not funny, but it's but it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And did you ever read that thing about the woman who changed her name for a week or something in business and noticed like better response? Well, on there's her email? been so many studies well, that I've seen about like um, identical resumes and one says mm-hmm. john and the other one says jane and like they're literally identical but john gets like the job more times and jane, than jane gets does. her period and jane gets <laughs> her period we can't hire her because blah, blah, blah. i feel like for most of my life i've really enjoyed going by alex there you go yeah See? I'm looping it back around but now that i have a sex toy company all of a sudden my j- I, I really struggle with this because mm-hmm. i mean i i I identify as a woman. I feel yeah. like a woman. Yeah. I didn't know I had a choice f- until I was like probably 25. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, I, anyway, but now it's important. I think for some reason people think of a, a, like it, their immediate reaction of sex toy owner. Mm-hmm. Oh, girl makes mm-hmm. it like, oh, it's not going to be, maybe there's a, a wellness angle or sure. maybe something yeah. else. It's really interesting the way it impacts my life, but I've noticed how impactful it is. And so, Wait, do you think, I think female f- sex toy companies led by females are taken more they're, seriously? You know what? I think they're more likely to understand what I'm trying to do. Okay. If they think I'm yeah, a yeah, dude, yeah. also maybe the response I'm likely to get... Mm. Um, I've had PR people just also be like, if you're going to be speaking somewhere, let's in and like the, the people that you want there yeah. and what kind of a crowd it might attract. If it, they think it's a guy yeah, versus if they think or if they're more sure it's a woman yeah. who's about to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. I guess like I would imagine massage therapists. Mm. Mm. There are just, there are things I think when it comes to sex, we are so much more comfortable having siloed gendered conversations. Oh, yeah. 100%. And it's something yeah, yeah, yeah. we're really trying to change. Yeah. Like people always, we're women centered, but honestly, wait, let me rephrase that. We're vulva centered. There you mm-hmm. go. Like that is really like, you know, like, look, this company was started because like, not with like with 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 some intention, but the intention gets clear about really what you're trying to do as you continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. Like we just wanted to make this toy. Um, yeah, we wanted to help the world have more orgasms. We yeah. wanted to like give the people who seemed like they could really use the help mm-hmm. the help, help. <laughs> that they would and like. sell it right. Sure, That's how you yeah. pay value in the world. Um, I and mean, that, one of your sex toys is very special because it can stay on right. So that, and that's yeah. how we started. That was it's how, like a totally. I had never seen anything me like neither. it. Neither, and I only honestly waited to have Alex. Alexandra Al Fine Whatever. on this pod. My voice is right. I, I'm, do I sound womanly? Do sure. I sound, do I sound yes. womanly? We you sound however you want to sound. Low baby. Sound I love that we womanly. all have like these deep, gravelly voices. Yeah. So I'm really into <laughs> I sound this. Girly. Yeah. It's, it's funny some... that I went deeper yeah. to sound more womanly. That yeah, was like, weird. Am I a, wo- <laughs> do am I I a woman? Would <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you fuck me? <laughs> I'd fuck, I'd you fuck so me so hard. hard. <laughs> Goodbye, horses. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love that. That is a child pervert's dream. Like, it's Silence of the Lambs, but you're like, but he's sexy. But he's hot. <laughs> but he's kind of hot. But right? he's kind of hot with his vagina. Totally. Got got the joke. Yeah, I'm so, I am so on the same page as you guys. Right Remy and now. I are just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but Charlotte, the, you ever see Silence of the Lambs? I've seen it. No, nope. I just don't. Know I know the reference. Okay, okay. will not okay. see it. Okay, no. but it's a um, great movie. But the thing that we were talking about on this panel that we yeah. were on together what you were talking about is like this gendered, very siloed Mm. way that we discuss sex. And it's shitty because like from a writer's point of view, like I get emailed questions constantly. And one of the number one questions I get are, where do I buy this shit? Mm -hmm. How do I buy this shit? Like Mm -hmm. what, like do I even look for when it comes to like buying my first sex toy? So many women, especially or people with vulvas are so uninformed about this and yeah. it's mo- because it's so siloed and it's so and you know it's also under like, wraps if you're not having the conversations like p- 
people like different shit. Some exactly. people like vibration. Some people like suction. Some people like if you're not having those conversations to figure out which one might be the one for you, you might end up like me who buys the rabbit because you see it on Sex, on in, the Sex in the City. Yeah. It doesn't work for you. And then you're just like, OK, oh, orgasms like are for me. Yeah. I don't like sex toys. Mm. Um, and then I think also the thing with sex toys. We have a return policy at Dame Products. Do you? Yes. Wow. That's amazing. I think that it's. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because. Well, ultimately, we want to take the shame out of this category. I was going to say, like, a lot of it, too, really is like, comes in discreet packaging. Yeah, and you're so like, So much of that. Okay. And it's hard because you know what? That really does change conversion rate. Sure. You does know, it? it? I got to tell you, being... When, you're, when your goal is to create value and get that value in people's hands in some way... Yeah. Right? Like, I'm, I'm a capitalist is what I'm, what I'm admitting here. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a female I'm, capitalist. I'm a capitalist. <laughs> I'm a female capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, and, and you, but you also want to do it by changing the world. Like also like women's sex toy, you mm-hmm. know, like if we're crea- quote it, unquote, quote, right. Yeah. It's not just for women. It's for anybody that has a vulva. Right. And that is a, a more accurate and clear. And clear people language. who are fucking the people with vulvas yes. get to enjoy mm-hmm. these things and too. That's, but that's the also thing. how the partners will search for it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I I would imagine that that's really who I think is searching for it in that language. Well, it's interesting that you say that because um part of my job is that I do SEO work for a website mm-hmm. and I actually write their commerce stories about sex and I write it off of SEO phrasing and it's SEO is search engine optimization yeah, yeah, yeah. for those people listening who are not digital nerds like yeah, I we, am. we've already mentioned seo twice um so in case you're not in keeping case you're up not, just keep like up with alex it. with the goodbye horses. <laughs> <laughs> but they literally search best vibrators for women best vibrators mm-hmm. like for couples like you know best vibrators for clips like they are mm-hmm. using that kind of language yeah. that it's like it because again the way that we think about this is still very gendered and like we yeah. haven't exactly broken past that. So people totally. are using the only phrasing that they know how to kind of look for this. Well, stuff. that's kind of also it's in, talking about language and anatomy. I think this other thing that we sensed when we first started mm-hmm. and now I have better language to describe our use of language, yeah. which is using i think the older generation really was about like trying to change this industry by using medical terminology yeah Mm. that's like i think that when we do that um we like push people away Mm -hmm. uh uh, very much so like totally to use real language yeah um so we love using both euphemisms and correct scientific language at dame products yeah and puns are instead so of just being great. Right. puns are the best. Something's wrong with you medically. I know. Yeah. Well, it, I, talk, like, I talk about this all the time when I try to like write about anal sex. Yeah. It's like imp- it's so difficult to write about it because I'm like insert this vibrator into your anus, and I'm like <laughs> that literally sounds like the worst thing in the yeah, entire you're world. You're not gonna be like touch it around your little hole. A yeah. Few times. But like, you so, do. Some of your articles are so fucking informative, and they have like like. Uh, drawings with them like i read one of the articles like so you want to shave your pussy yeah i wrote it <laughs> <laughs> i wrote a story when i was still at refinery 29 about how to shave your vulva and like i it was like anatomically correct drawings yep. i went for it but i had to figure out different ways to say like vulva because mm-hmm. like no ever i'm like put the razor against your vulva it's like you're like, like i'm gonna cannot call it a vagina this time i'm like i'm I know calling it a pro- vagina yeah. i know that it's actually a vulva you're not putting a razor up inside of you and shaving your vagina but like, when you're thinking about disseminating information especially advertising yeah. like every word is so important mm-hmm. you have so few words like we have such short attention spans we, yeah like <clears throat> and it's not just the mta like just whatever I, I was reading in Boston. They like rejected a wing. The wing, and I think that oh, was yeah. so fascinating to me because I think it really helps illuminate the challenge in in just a different way. So the wing had advertisements that said um, they like, said the world like, was, was built made fi- for, was by, made for men. We're made for, for you. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that stance was viewed as political. Mm-hmm. And I think which like, is cri- like. How is that political? Well, I think Are you everything saying that is every po- woman is liberal and every male is concerned? Like it's, that's it's, what you'd be half. It's the feminist say. perspective. Yeah. It's really the way. If, look, if you're not the status quo, then your view can be deemed as. How political. are we not the status quo? But, We're fifty right, percent of the population because of the, the, the patriarchy, and that's the whole and that's thing. The whole, the whole thing. thing. Now let's talk about <laughs> how we can tear down the patriarchy. How much time do we have? I think we can nail it. Uh, I don't know. I think you guys gotta move into this house. <laughs> Be staring at this fake fruit all day. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, no. Um, but it's not just the MTA either. It's not just train. Oh, wait. No. It's everywhere. It's Facebook. We yeah. can't advertise on Facebook. No. Our listeners, I've been talking about this the past few episodes, can't find how come. If you search how come, if you search how see, it doesn't come up. It doesn't how come up. see you doesn't come I've up. tried to How tag C-U-M. you in stories before I know, on and it Instagram takes forever. Instagram doesn't work even people like I have the, the same people who thing. are following us don't see our posts so turn on post notifications you guys yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice I, like I think that. but that's it's what crazy maybe, that's yeah we're having a really really similar we're having the same problem and we do were you ever, I were just, you ever some, taken down yeah, oh yeah you know Instagram yeah. says they do like everybody I talk to there is like we do not shadow ban like they really stand by that yeah, shadow banning do. I mean I think it's like what is shadow banning and how are you defining it Are you, if you're changing the rules for us yeah. in any way even if you've like wiped out part of our algorithm or like some something we've like built up over time yeah. let's say there's a part and honestly I can see them not seeing it mm. it is so easy to just ignore sex because it's what we've been doing for so long. Yep. Quietly. Like, quietly, yeah, yeah. We, we ignore it. We do things behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. We, which I think is really what has allowed sex to be part of both our most positive and joyful experiences and our worst. Yeah. yeah. The privacy you know? can be really, really. nice, the but also can be really, terrible. really terrible. Yeah. Really terrible and dangerous. And, and dangerous. dangerous. We, we're seeing that right now. What, and like not, and, and and just allowing advertisements that are talking about STDs and condoms and not letting women know. Yeah, that there are ways for them to like. We advertise gentlemen clubs. We're constantly telling men that their virality is that mm-hmm. their urge. Their virality. Virality. Yeah. Virality. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm saying it wrong. Their joie de vivre. <laughs> joie de vivre. <laughs> Um, is like you know val- validated. Sure, yeah. um, uh, lots of v words here, and we and don't vulvas and, and vulvas, vulvas are very are not. Are <laughs> <and> <laughs> No, but I always say this, like whenever I do a panel, I'm like, if somebody had told me, instead of doing all of the sex ed, instead of telling me about STDs, instead of telling me how to not get pregnant, if they had told little Remy, you can have a great sexual experience by yourself, have this great orgasm, and never have to worry about any of those other things until you feel comfortable enough to do it with another person, I would have been like, yeah. Yeah. Wait, I have a question. Mm. You don't have memories of being little and masturbating. You I definitely didn't... did. I just, I just wouldn't do it for long enough. I didn't I masturbate didn't until I was res- sixteen. I was sixteen really? when I masturbated I'm a- for the first time. I, I, yeah. Okay. I don't remember not yeah. masturbating. Like I was always masturbating. Do you See, I was not your first orgasm then. No. No. Because I, I mean, I think it feels like it's something that it's maybe built, but I definitely mm. remember what what I really remember is starting to feel shame, yeah. which mm. made me feel like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> like first- I was positive I was done yeah. I no longer was in the mood and I we're was like, like this ah! is embarrassing yeah. yeah, get Fluffy out of there <laughs> like, move Fluffy now like if yeah. mom came in and saw Fluffy where you got Fluffy it's not great That's oh really- you were fucking a toy I was fucking a I- stuffed animal well I don't like I was I thought maybe it was your pet watching get- you and that you were in like some kind of <laughs> cuck situation oh no 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 <laughs> Fluffy was a stuffed animal oh okay. my god <laughs> <laughs> Fluffy was a stuffed animal <laughs> It's like the three-way scenario that we were talking about before, but with you, yourself, and your pet in the exactly. corner. Like, <laughs> I'm obsessed. Fluffy was a stuffed animal. Extras on Patreon. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I think, you know what we were talking about earlier that I didn't get a finish, which Eva, which is a hands-free clip yes. vibrator yes. that you can wear while you're piving, which is penis in vagina ing. Okay. Really, it could also be... Any kind of penetration, and dildo and vagina, ing, finger and vagina, finger and vagina, ing, any kind of penetrate. It's tough because if you say just penetrative, like not really blowjobs or uh, yeah, so like that's not really what it's for. Language, I mean, you could be wearing it while giving a blowjob. You could be wearing it while giving a blowjob, yeah. but it's for vulva owners during. Pen- You're right. Ooh, I like that penetrative. <laughs> That yeah, was okay. a great hand so. gesture. You just made. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I knew what it meant. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, but you could be blowing somebody while yeah, wearing so that it, but was it stays designed on and also hands free. It's great. Hands free, and it was designed to help close the pleasure gap, which exists it's predominantly in, hetero, in, the, in the heterosexual community. Yep. Um, but it really is for anybody with a vulva. We always do our testing with people who have a wide range of identities and have partners with mm-hmm. different people. And as we've continued to expand our line, we really have focused our 
product development efforts around genitalia more mm. than gender identity. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, which is super important. Yeah, which is really, yeah. But it's funny because we still get, we still, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, peop, I view us as like n- non-gender, but like kind of women-centered yeah, at sure. the same time. I, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of vibrators are like mm. multi- um, multi what do you call it use use <laughs> no but also multi private part mm-hmm. <laughs> like you could put a vibrator up a butt you yeah and everybody whoa, has a butt yes 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 yeah there's a quiz on um, but yeah so you need really a stopper very you need a flare. specific yeah you need a really but you strong can, flare. you can put anything around you can put a lot of tip. things around your butt yeah the perineum the perineum, the perineum. Oh, the perineum. a very <laughs> tough word to spell uh, very tough the word to spell sphincter. Um, that's a sexy word. Oh my god, maybe I'll start incorporating mm. that into my writing about anal sex. I've sphincter. been reading this Tantra book about like meditations that you can do, and Ooh. a lot of them involve uh, visualizing light shooting up from your anus. Ooh, it's amazing! Wow, damn. And also, every time it says anus, I'm like, <laughs> you <should> call it <laughs> your root chakra. <laughs> my root chakra, yes. But they really tell you to think about. Your your body. Yeah, yeah no. You know, in, in, and like, I think about space constantly. Yeah, <laughs> um, Maria, when was your first orgasm? You my, started, oh, yeah. So I started masturbating yeah. when I well, I masturbated for the first time when I was sixteen. But my first orgasm wasn't until I was like twenty one. Wow. Yeah, because I had a boyfriend in college who wasn't making me come, and then we mm-hmm. broke up uh, right before Valentine's Day, and I was like, I'm going to get myself a vibrator for Valentine's Day. And I ordered it off of, like, Bayland, nice. and it came in, like, you know, like a white box. It was nothing, yep. and it came on Valentine's Day, and so did I. Yay! <laughs> oh, my God. So it was a very what happy a Valentine's Valentine's Day. Valentine's it was the Day best. My roommate was out of town. I ordered myself some sushi. I masturbated with my vibrator. It was like it was a purple rabbit vibrator. But ah, I see, didn't, and it can work for other people. But see, I actually I I did not insert. Well, so I inserted it, and I wasn't feeling good. And yeah. then I was like, let me see if I could just put the tip against my clit, and that's what got me off. Yeah, and that's then, what Charlotte you know did. Why. Same purple, same rabbit. purple Let's rabbit. Turn it around, girl. Yes, girl. <laughs> It was pink. That was the issue. Yeah, no, and then that pointed me in the direction of, oh, okay, like I'm not actually into like I'm not this, an inside. I'm not man. an inside Just, person. Well, yeah. one, I would encourage you to e- expand. Well, beyond, since then, right, I've since then, I know, but yeah. only four percent of women report yep. penetration alone yeah. being their primary path to orgasm. Sure. We used to think it was 8 to 25%, and then no. you said 4%. 4% so, 4 per, so 4% is, it's, it's, so it always depends on how you ask the question. Okay. So this question was asked, what is your most reliable, not can you, yeah. not have mm. you ever had an orgasm internally, uh-huh. generally, your most reliable, if you want to have an orgasm, mm-hmm. you're what going do you do? for it. What do you do? What's your Clip. main path to orgasm? Clip. And only 4%, 4% said, said penetration. internal penetration. Uh-huh. Exclusive. I think some people did say internal and external, and external stimulation. Yeah. Yeah. A, a but blended like, orgasm. A, yeah, but you know a blender. A, yeah. I think... I think bl- blended orgasms come are together. come together. Yes. Yeah, blended. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that movie, you guys? Or am I alone on this one? <laughs> Nobody saw Blended. Oh, yeah. you should see it. Terry Crews, Drew Barrymore, Adam <laughs> Sandler. So good. What a time! Sounds like no one should see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, but yeah, for the longest time, I thought that I could only get off with my clit, and then I like you know as I got more into yeah that i was like oh wait i could actually do both and it was a while until i was like i could actually touch myself during penetrative sex with a man and this is fine Uh i still really struggle to 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 do it which is what i feel like i'm always trying to create tools to help get clitoral stimulation during penetrative sex you still struggle like i find that i can give myself clitoral stimulation either if i'm on top Mm. It's mm-hmm. it, it's position position yeah, it's wise position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is what I'm struggling yeah. with. Yeah, position's difficult. Not yeah, not comfortability. Not yeah. comfortability. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was like, because you're like married and you guys are like happy. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, so I 
but like the whole thing with me was and it links back to what you were saying about the advertisements was like I had no idea how to even find a vibrator to begin with so I literally just googled because I write about this often that I would google everything having to do with men because I had no fucking idea what I was doing yeah I literally googled like vibrators for women Mm -hmm. like we said and uh, that it took me to babeland and so like it's a shame because I worry for like younger women who are new to this yeah like you know like or not so young like I was 21 that's yeah. kind of old and who are new to this and they just don't have the tools to kind of find ways to pleasure themselves and like you were saying about sex education they don't even know that that's a, an, that's option. an option like no, I used to think oh I have to make myself like this perfect woman so that I can find some guy who's going to make a fun sex thing totally. happen for me and i'm a sexual mm. girl well, so i want to do that not even if i i talk about this i'm writing my second book now and i write about this in one of my essays that in i remember distinctly in middle school that we were separated when we had like the initial sex talk mm-hmm. and it was girls in one mm-hmm. side and boys in the other boys learned about like um wet dreams and yeah. masturbation and then they played kickball and we learned about <laughs> pregnancy and periods yeah pleasure was has, not a was part never of it. even when i got to high school ple- our pleasure was never yeah. a part of the conversation yeah. did you know that penises as men get older they you, they get like less hard it's not just like binary and the uh-huh. reason why i tell you this is because i feel like what you definitely learned was how your vagina was going to change yeah. as you aged yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like we never talk about that. So I don't mean to just like, well, if they're going to do it, I'm going to yeah. do it back. But like, yeah, penises also change as totally. And like, and it's important little... that people, especially people who are in heterosexual relationships, know this shit. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I, I want a guy who knows how my vagina works. Yeah. To have sex. Mm-hmm. You know what I Definitely. mean? Like, you should know, like, how this shit yeah. works before you, you come here. You should also like, be able to have the conversations together. I think that yeah. is really a big part of the problem because it's telling people yeah. that they're supposed to have, like, be able to control themselves differently. Yeah. Um, and also being able to even, I think the way some people post me too, and I hate saying post me too, because I, I feel like it's it wasn't happening. like, yeah. Yeah, okay, it wasn't like, just like this one year that everyone went raping. It, like it was like a moment when men <laughs> oh realized, <my> <laughs> yeah, what the world was act like, what was yeah. actually yeah. happening. Yeah. Okay. Um. But some men feel really scared and don't know how to have a conversation about yeah. sex at all now with a woman, or don't want to be in a room alone with a woman. Right there is like a mm-hmm. small cohort of people mm-hmm. who have moved further away. Yeah. And I think the distinction here is like sex and harassment are different, and totally we need to be able to learn communicate during sex about yeah. sex together. Yeah, Maria, we we talk about your second book a little bit, but yeah. let's talk about your first one. Yeah, it's my just first come book just out. Came out yesterday. It's been like a whirlwind. It's crazy. It's not, I know. I meant well, to we're bring recording. Copies. We're recording today, but. But it'll July, be. It came out July. It came out July second. Yeah. yeah. Um, I meant to bring copies for you guys, but I bricked it's because okay. I was running around like a maniac okay. early this morning. Um, but, but tell yeah, us about out. the book. So it's called Simple Acts of Love. Yeah. And it's ways that you can add closeness to your relationship. And I actually was when I was approached to do the book, I said to them two things. I was like, I want everything to be gender neutral. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So it. I only use they them. I don't mm-hmm. say like. Buy your man a tie. Like, like, um, warm up a towel and put it on his ball. On you. <laughs> It'll drive him wild. It's my favorite Slip thing. Slip an like ice cube Cosmo. from old Cosmo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, put an ice cube in your mouth when you blow him. I'm like, yeah. that sounds terrible. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the hot and cold sensations will drive him yeah. wild. Oh, my God. I think we should get a list of all Cosmo's tips oh and God. do them. And, and do yeah. them and I'm see like, what it works. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's. That That's would be a great, a great article. Great or something. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. That's a pitch. So everything is like buy your partner or do this Mm. or do them, they, them. Yeah. And I said, I want to be able to talk about sex in Mm -hmm. the book because that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the, it's funny that you, you mentioned it now because one of the things that I mention is talk about what turns you on. Like talk about fantasies that you have. Go to a, sex toy shop with your partner or browse for see it what online excites you. even see if it's what like something that you. you giggle at first yeah and you're like oh haha, ha, did, did you, you really know? use this then like call over the saleswoman yeah. and be like tell us how to use exactly this thing. and so like i talk about that in the book because i think that 
in this day and age, sex and love aren't always linked. And I think that that's sometimes important because I think that women have, I was especially taught that like, you should stay a virgin until you're married. And so like sex and love was, Uh were like one and the same. And I think it's important for us to separate the two, but it's also important for us to remember that they're connected as well, especially in healthy partnerships Um, that sex is an expression of love and that you should be able to explore your sexuality with your partner because that is like such a cornerstone of Mm -hmm. a healthy relationship. So I talk about sex a lot in the book. Um, Yeah. And just like, I I don't know. I think it's such an important part of it. And I wish that more women felt or women is, I think people who identify as women have such a hard time with like expressing that. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I tell people about what I do and what I write about, they're like shocked right they're like i can't believe that you write about your sex life for the internet and i'm like yeah well 21 year old maria who had never had an orgasm who was googling does this boy like me would have really benefited from someone like me doing what i'm doing so i'm obviously going to be doing more of that so i'll be doing more of that in the second book but the first book is more like tip based and i want people to actually like it's not just like a cute it is a very cute looking book but it actually has some good tips yeah i mean you also have articles that aren't sex based per se but it's relationship based. Yeah. like there was one where you went around the city asking people why they're in a relationship yeah because you had always been asked oh why, why are, are you, you single? single and all these people immediately like took offense to it of course but of course you're going to take offense to something when somebody's like well why are you single yeah. like why are you white they're like i don't understand why, Africa, are you why, are you Africa, why are you white no i literally <laughs> i mean growing up in an italian american family i was constantly asked like why are you single? I'm yeah. surprised. Like I understand. I, I can see how people are confused, but I'm surprised people were even offended. Yeah, they were like, "Well, why are you asking me that?" And I was like, "Why do you mm. feel that you have the, you know, the freedom to ask me why I'm single?" I'm single. Yeah, as if it's not a similar were choice. Were these people? Were you also doing the thing though, where you were standing outside and asking random people? No. Well, uh, it was a little bit of both. So I would be like, one, I was at a bar. I think I remember writing okay. an article that I was at a bar and like I started talking to this couple and I asked like, "Why are you in a relationship?" And they were like floored by that question. Wasn't one an Uber? One was something? in an Uber. Yeah. yeah one was in an Uber pool. And, and the guy was like, well, like we've just been together so long that it makes sense. And, yeah. she, and she's you like, did what? I just send him off to have I know. A I was like, did I just make <laughs> these well, people break up? You know what? Maybe that's, maybe that is what you're triggering yeah. too, is people just having, you know, like, like realization. That they're like, why am I in a relationship? Yeah. Because I do think that, I mean, I think I, sh- I, think a lot about like is partnership better well and that's my whole thing is that i write about this a lot in my next book too about how i had to start real like i realized early on when i started writing about sex and relationships that we in this society we treat singlehood as like a layover Mm. not a destination yeah you know what i mean like it's just kind of like you're biding your time until the one comes yeah. along and that's such a fucked up way of Dude, thinking I've about thought of uh, my own yeah. life as like oh well that was the period where i was dating so and so yeah and this is the period where i was dating Nana. it's like wait, you cabin what? out your life based on relationships and single yeah. them is kind of like this weird in between like and i'm like no like why am i treating this as like some temporary state mm. of being when it like I've been, I have not have been, you mostly, a, have you mostly been, what has been your, have you mostly been single? I've mostly been single. I mean, yeah. I've been single. I've dated men for like two months here, three months there, okay. blah, 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 blah. But like I've mostly, I have not been in a quote unquote serious relationship where like he was my boyfriend. I was his girlfriend since I was like 25. I'm 29 now. So but that's fine. But it, And it's fine. I used to put so much stock on that amount mm-hmm. of time and it's unnecessary to put so much yeah. it, me- it literally means nothing one of my favorite things i talked about this on um girls gotta eat podcast yes, our favorites my brother once said to me the wake of a ship does not indicate where the ship is going and what that means is your past has no nothing to do with what future nothing results to do are with it. so like okay you've been single for four years you could go out tomorrow and meet someone same Love thing though same. oh you've been it's in a so relationship good, right? with this person thing. for eight years that doesn't mean you have to, to stay, stay with, with them, them well, forever I, so i've mostly been in serious monogamous yeah. relationships yeah. yeah and i have really wanted to be single mm-hmm. yeah in a way that i've 
to me it has been a destination yeah. in moments but I think I'm probably I think I'm the weirder one for yeah. how much I've been in a relationship and how little I've been single which is also something I, I look back and I'm like should I have been single for longer what's yeah. wrong with well, me well that's I another thing I needed somebody or had somebody I've did written, I fuck enough people when I've I was written, single I've written about that I, too I did I did <laughs> <laughs> about that too and i've talked to sexologists about that about how one of the like because i think that like third wave feminism and like all this has been amazing for women and like reclaiming Mm -hmm. it and like sex in the city made single dumb something that we can celebrate but the negative backlash of that too is that people think that they have to be out of relationships in order to grow to grow right yes so that you're with the right person you can grow with you can grow with them oh my you can definitely grow with them in fact i think i can't grow with this person anymore then you're not it's supposed yeah. to be in that relationship totally. anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. I completely yeah. agree with that. And then you can grow to on your own. Yeah. But I've always thought like when I'm in long relationships too, that I'm like, well, I should just stick it out because we have the history and stuff. History it, is beautiful. And history I think that, like, is beautiful. But, but if it's that's not, the only if, thing, exactly, mm-hmm, then that's, it's, not, it's not a good you thing. You don't have a future just because you have a past. Exactly. Yeah. The wake but of a ship it, does not point to where the boat is going. Yeah. Yeah. But it is also really hard to decide you want a different identity. Yep. Right. That's what you're doing. You're like, you know what? I am unhappy or I am what I want for myself is different than what I used to want. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to maybe hurt somebody else a little bit in order to have that. Yep. Yeah. Th- you know, like that, that's, that's a challenging decision. A hundred percent. Charlotte has a good point, Char. Oh, um, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> sorry. You guys are I was just thinking that like, I really think there's a difference between the question. Also, why are you in a relationship versus why are you in this, this relationship? A hundred percent. She was right. Yeah. yeah. That was a good and point. That was a good point. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no but i mean because i think those people who react so negatively and are offended are in the wrong relationship sure. yeah, maybe. that's why you get triggered yeah i mean and but that's but there's why nothing I, wrong with a relationship or no. maybe they just really haven't thought about it and they and maybe that will first trigger them and then they'll realize oh my god i'm with this person for all these reasons well that yeah. was the yeah. whole thing with this guy in the uber was i like got out of that uber pool and i was like fuck i think that i just He's like gonna go break up with his boyfriend up. yeah I just bet you initiated something and yeah it could be the other way too like totally. maybe he'll could think about a conversation it. Yeah. right yeah and then maybe it'll unlock more gratitude and love and it'll yeah. be a great thing oh my god i'm out here saving the world, saving guys. The world. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, I think that it's good to make a little some waves and to sure. engage in like why am i unhappy and to express that yeah. yeah um i think that that's how you get through it absolutely do you have a favorite article of yours that you've written well the one that i get ta- the people talk to me about the most is the one about how i had sex in a crawl space with that hipster guy did you read that one no For the guy. but i will <laughs> <laughs> so the short story the tldr story like version of it is that i met this guy it was during a time where i thought that i was going to wind up with like this like brooding hipster who like plucked on a mandolin and slept on a mattress on the floor Did that. You know? Did that. <laughs> <laughs> and so i met this guy who worked at um the king's county brewery which is in the brooklyn navy yard yep. which is actually right around the corner from where i live now and he um worked the midnight shift and he was a transient hipster and i was like oh my god i'm obsessed with him but he actually lived in a crawl space above a bathroom and i was just kind of like oh this is what this life actually looks like mm-hmm. like it's me having sex in a crawl space above a bathroom it's not like it's sexy not as and glamorous fun. and lovey bohem as but you thought that is one of my favorite stories because That's women awesome. have that reaction where it's like i did that and i'm like yeah yeah, I yeah. know we all did. Like, yeah. <laughs> and like, I think that it's important. I think that we've gotten to a good point in society where sex and love aren't exactly like yeah. one and the same. Like, I mm-hmm. was taught to remain a virgin until I was married, yeah. which is silly. Or for even me. finding the quote unquote yeah, right one, the right person. Like, it has to be somebody who <laughs> loves Did your you. Parents continue to t- say that to you, even. Oh yeah, until I was in college. I write about this in my second book, where I like my parents used to actually say we stayed virgins until we were married. And then I learned that that was a lie too. Oh. So like it was, it was a bit, I write all about this in my second book. That's Stay a huge tuned. thing. You ever watch Jane, the virgin? Yes. Like so it was Jane like a is brought big... up to be a virgin. She has to crumple that flower. I relate. Yep. Andrea Barica, who was on that panel with you guys too, mm-hmm. who she was on last season. She said she had a, a flower crumpled for her Mine and was said to keep your virginity. Chewed gum. Mine was like, you're like a chewed up piece of gum. Uh, Apparently. How about so that? I've, yeah. We 
we, we, but talked, we talked about, about that. But then Jane yeah. the Virgin finds out that Alba, the one who told to crumple the flower. Spoiler alert! Dude, spoiler! Whatever, whatever, you guys. The show is like eight years old. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it like, but I think it's important to also remember that like sex and love can also be one and the yeah. same. Alex, do you have any um, exciting products that, yes. that are in the works? You know, I th- I think we recently just launched, or that are in the works. Or when yeah, are we gonna, launched. When is this? Work. This is coming out Sunday. What is? So, so things that have recently launched. Um, nice. Yeah. So we launched Kip, which is this really awesome vibrator mm. that it's got, it's like a triangle shape, so it's really easy to hold. It's our take on like a bullet. Ooh. And it also has like a flutter feature. Great. And before that, we launched Palm, which I got to tell you is my favorite, is my favorite one. Mm-hmm. It's like squishy and it bends with you. Ooh. And I like to hump things as we talked about fluffy earlier. Yeah. So I really like to hump things. <laughs> so it's a really humpable product while Kip is way more fun to move around and to find different sensations with. What about the sex pillow? We were talking. Is that coming soon? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, if you're listening to this, we're about to run out of stock on okay. that product. Awesome. So, like, because get what it. I like about your products too is it's not just like increasing pleasure; it's reducing pain. Yeah, yeah. I think and that that's like a, a real, huge. I think that that's such an interesting point. I think for women, pain and or it sounds like because I think it's also probably true for men, but like you know, pain and pleasure are really linked. Yeah. And but yes, like pillow is great because it changes the angle that the penis and the vagina or any internal product yeah. that you use and the yeah. vagina are going to interact mm-hmm. but um, especially with p and v sex like you hit that cervix and it's yeah, it can hurt. For everyone. so it's a way you can uh, tilt it um, yeah. and you can play around with it to get lots of different angles mm-hmm. and also it looks like a regular pillow yeah that's awesome so, like, just use it on your head yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> alright well we're finding I wouldn't use it on your head because it is it supports body weight so yeah. it's not as comfortable sure. as a pillow for that purpose and, and there's cum all over over it. <laughs> and that's so it, you can wash it and then it has like a waterproof lining but we're having a lot of people use it for food they're eating on it that's awesome Obsessed. because it's like easy to clean it's you know Eat it's more bed. structural yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what i want to do are people are using it as laptops or like to prop it. their back Great. up yes. and but if you guys want any of these products go on howcomepodcast.com and use our affiliate link with dame we've Woo. got all of these uh products and uh companies that we're partnered with and we love them and you can get get our products through there um we can even do how come dame at checkout at dame products and that will get you wow like, yes and, like, let's do that let's do that yes i'm loving yes. this watching this affiliate so we'll link happen in real time yes it'll give like ten dollars off Great. amazing i'm gonna use it right now amazing amazing um you guys this has been so much fun Sorry. i loved having you here i wish i could keep you for longer but you mm. both have very busy days yes. Um, Alexandra Fine, can you tell us where we can find you and Dame Products online? We are at dameproducts.com and we are at Dame Products on all the social medias. And you do have to type in our whole mm, fucking name. name. Fucking name. Do it though, Dumb. you guys. Maria Del Russo, where can we find you? I'm at Maria Del Russo on Instagram and then at Maria underscore Del Russo on Twitter. Um, and you could buy my book, Simple Acts of Love, on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. So exciting. Com- congratulations. Thank you. Very exciting. <laughs> congratulations to both of you. Um, Alex, I just have to ask everybody at the end of a sexual experience, which this has been, did you finish? Yes. Amazing. Maria, did you finish? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Charlotte, <laughs> did you finish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, did you finish? I did. Woo. Woo. All right, guys. Thank you for coming. Satisfied. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank and we'll see you next time. Bye. How come? Bye. Bye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly. They say you'll know when you go all the way from A right down to O. Oh, no. I think that I still got a ways to go. Oh, no. I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves I'm rolling up my sleeves Oh baby, I believe these guests can help Cause I can't do it by myself I wanna just